Hello everyone, today we are going to be looking at the preliminary patch notes for updates 1.77. Unfortunately, when I was on the Derv server yesterday, I took a break uh, to actually sleep uh, because I hadn't slept in a while. And when I woke up, the dev server was closed, so I wasn't able to get some of the videos that I wanted to get out. But I do have some experience with some of the uh, aircraft which are going to be coming to the game. So with uh, this video here, I'm going to talk about those experiences and what I see coming to the game in the form of these planes and also some of the tanks. Uh, but mainly to let you know that on Thursday, I'm going to record a big uh, discussion with Bad Mofo, uh, Lieutenant Mills, and, B and uh, Tex. And these three guys are incredibly experienced War Thunder players. They're all rank 6 players when it comes to tanks. And we're going to go through their opinions on the new top 4 vehicles. So the T-64B the uh, Abrams, the Challenger, and the Leopard 2K, and, you know, what they think of them, and all of this good stuff. So that's what we're going to do on Thursday. It'll probably be up on Friday. The reason why I'm mentioning it now is if there are any questions that you would like me to bring up, because I'm going to basically uh, be the guy who lays up uh, the questions for them so they can answer them, please put them in the comments so I can read them and then put them into it uh, as, you know, questions. But anyway, uh, let's go through this preliminary patch notes. So obviously it's called Advancing Storm, which is an interesting name, but it's still kind of interesting. I thought it was a homage to Desert Storm, uh, but it seems like it's more of just, you know, pushing on the uh, BI of the uh, ground vehicles into the modern era in the form of the uh, more rank 6 vehicles. The main changes for me, which I find interesting, is the Dagor engine. And what I found uh, with the Dagor engine was the fact that uh, it was pretty much a hell of a lot nicer than the uh, current version of uh, War Thunder. And the main reason for that is because of contrast. Because the shadows looked a lot nicer on trees, on the ground, on houses, what that basically meant was that you had a much larger contrast between the colours of them and the actual shadows themselves, meaning that it was very easy to distinguish where one tree finished and one tree began, or where one tree finished and one tree... Uh, sorry, and one house uh, finished and one house began. This was kind of diminished by the fact that they've put this layered fog and mist effect on, but uh, it doesn't diminish it too much. Up close, you will see the contrast a hell of a lot more, the rain and mud and puddle stuff looks absolutely wonderful. One of the things that I am kind of disappointed about is the fact that they didn't do anything to the track marks. Uh, even though the track marks do look very nice uh, already on the Dagor Engine 4, it would have been nice to see a bit of an increase in, you know, the detail of track marks of tanks uh, going through the ground. So, with all that said, the Dagor engine brings a lot of new stuff, and basically the way I see it is, uh, in the f the current uh, one we have in update 1.75, the Dagor 4, I have to muddle around with the post effects settings to get the contrast pretty high to make it easy to distinguish between stuff and also look nice. On update 1.77, with the Dagor 5.0, this wasn't required. Uh, it was pretty much done for me. So I think I could make it look even more crisp, even more beautiful with the post effects settings. I didn't muddle about with them at all on the dev server. I just left everything vanilla because I think that's the right thing to do to give people a realistic uh, look at what it will look like by its own instead of trying to enhance it and make it look better. But yeah, I really like the rain effects. I think the rain effects are uh, really good. And the reason for this is because you can tell that rain's there, you can see it on the ground, but it doesn't impair your vision as much. When it was raining before, especially in aircraft, one of the biggest issues with this was the fact that it would take up the whole of your damn screen and seeing anything past it was pretty much impossible to do. Um, and luckily now, with the new Dagor Engine 5, it should look a hell of a lot nicer than it did before. The other graphical improvements, as you can see, dynamic clouds and sun. This means that the clouds actually move at an actual rate, and so does the sun. Uh, Mike Goes Boom made a video of the Kachuska 
actually looking at the sunset and watching, sorry, the sunrise and watching the sunrise, I would definitely say go and watch that video because it illustrates how the sun moves during the battle. So before, we just had a stable light source um, in the battle and a lot of people didn't like this because it meant that it would blind one side, giving the other side an advantage, and I completely agree with that. With the dynamic clouds and sun in aircraft and ground, it means that it diminishes that uh, disadvantage, and also with some of the other lighting effect changes, <clears throat> it just looks a hell of a lot better overall. In aircraft, it looks absolutely pucker. In ground forces, there are still a few issues with the rays of the sun, but hopefully with the dynamic uh, stuff added to it, it should be okay. Um, <clears throat> the effects of the bullet shells up to 30mm hitting the ground, I did test that a little bit. I didn't really see any uh, difference, especially with machine guns. Uh, it looked pretty similar, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure where uh, that goes. There was a bit more sparking, uh, but that was pretty much present in update 1.75. I think they've just enhanced that effect, which is what they've done. So uh, let's go through some of the new vehicles. We have the Magak 3, which is a pack vehicle, the M1 Abrams, the Leopard 2K, T64B, Challenger, AMX-30, AMX-30 B2 brand new. So the Magak 3 uh, is a solid pickup uh, premium at 7.7. Uh, I think it's fine at 7.7. There is no massive advantage over the M60 that is sat there. It is pretty much an upgraded version of the 7.7 vehicles that we have in the tech tree. So even though it's slightly upgraded uh, compared to like the M60, I'm okay with this uh, because it has its disadvantages as well. So 7.7 makes sense for it. Uh, I don't think it's going to take over the game or anything, but I think it's much more of a decent premium compared to something like the T114, where if you're going to add something like that, I believe it has to be in the tree just because it's a light tank. And also because uh, it's so out of the blue in a way that uh, you should have a copy of it in the tree. Very much like how I feel about the RU251. Uh, so the M1 Abrams, I've done a video on it. Same with the Leopard 2K, T64B and Challenger. So if you want my opinions on it, uh, go and watch those videos over the last few days. And uh, as I said, we'll be getting the opinions of three very experienced War Thunder players on uh, Friday. Uh, talking about the top tier uh, tanks now <clears throat> and where to go from there. The MX-30 pack, uh, it wasn't actually on the dev server, at least not for me because I haven't bought the pack. I don't know if it was available for people who had bought the pack, but it wasn't there for me. Uh, so there's not really a lot I can comment on it. I mean, it's pretty much exactly the same as the one in the tree. And as we'll see... Oh no, those changes have already rolled out. Uh, so they've lowered the BR of the MX-30 uh, at least the first one, and I believe the second one. Uh, it's gone down to 7.3. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, it's still got the same issue. The heat shell on the first one is just not good enough, and it has no stabilizer. So, good luck against everything. I'm not sure if it's 7.3, actually. Um, it might be a, uh, it might be 7.7. 7, but And whatever happens, it's lowered by 0.3 BR. So, the pack one should be 2. The brand new is a vehicle which is going to get smashed by all of these new top tier vehicles and also smashed by the vehicles that we already have in games. So the MBT, the KPZ and the T64A. I feel kind of bad for the brand new, but uh, at least it has ERA, so against heat it'll be a bit more useful. The issue is nobody fires heat, apart from maybe the new Leopard 2K, uh, which, well, great. You can survive a shot and then it can reload and kill you. The aircraft, so I did a preliminary look at some of the aircraft. Uh, the F-84G 21RE is a direct copy of the Italian one, just with American secondary loadout, so it should be better. Uh, it is at the same BR. As I said in the video, it's very similar to the AD2, AD4s uh, of each nation. Not really that much of a difference, apart from the American one is slightly better because it gets slightly better secondary weapons, but it is a very much slight thing. HE-177, I'm going to have a lot of fun flying, but it does have its issues, um, mainly the fact that it doesn't have full coverage all over it, and once people figure out where to actually attack it from, yeah, it's going to be easy to take apart. The LA-200, I'm still unsure on. A lot of people seem to be very hyped about this aircraft, uh, being very good or being overpowered. 
Uh, I still need to see it in action uh, against some of the other ones because we do have a lot of ATO aircraft which are very good right now, uh, such as the G91. Uh, the issue is when they get up tiered, how do they do? And the G91 does pretty good uh, at 9.0. The LA200, I think, would just be a worse MiG 17, so why would you take it? Uh, so it depends, you know, how it stacks up at 9.0. If it gets into a 7.0, it'll just be like every other 8.0 jet. It will just annihilate 7.0 <laughs> jets. It's just one of those unfortunate things uh, that we have to get used to. Uh, or at least it has to be changed in some way, but if it stays on its current trajectory, yes, the LA-200 at 80 will batter everything at 70. it'll be competitive at 80, and it will be slightly worse than the 90s, just like every other 80. Uh, it's in, in the bit of the, the 80 bracket right now is in a bit of a doldrums, uh, I think is the way to say it. Uh, Britain got a few new Spitfires. The, not all of them are listed here. If you actually go to the dev server video I did on the aircraft, there are two new ones in the tree for the British, and uh, I believe it's the Mark 5B and the Mark 5C. Um, I might be wrong on that, but they're pretty much the, trop the untropical versions of the Mark 5s that we have, which don't have the bottom, like, air intake, which would keep the engine cool. This means that they're more streamlined, it means that they will act very much similar to stuff like the Spitfire Mark uh, Mark 9, but slightly worse performance. And if we look at um, one of them, it has two 20s and the 7.7s, seven and the other one had the 420 configuration that you find on stuff like the Spitfire Mark, Mark 5C. Uh, so we'll have to see. I have always preferred the Spitfires, which have had two 20s and then 7.7s. The reason for this is because I always just ran out of ammunition on the four Hispanos, but that was a hell of a long time ago, and I think I'm a better player than I am uh, compared to back then. I also didn't like the fact how heavy uh, the Spitfire felt when it had the four Hispanos instead of the two, but that will those will definitely be aircraft that I will look at uh, once the patch drops. Probably the first ones I'll grind out uh, just to have a look at, but on the dev server they were, well, it was just a Spitfire, right? Uh, it felt really nice to fly. I really enjoy my Spitfires. Uh, the dive speed may be something to question, um, uh, because we've had a lot of aircraft around that BR added, which have a hell of a good dive speed, and that is one of the issues of the mid-tier Spitfires. The dive speed is questionable uh, at best. The MB5 I did take out a few times just to fly it about. Um, the way I would describe it is a clip wing, uh, slightly less maneuverable Spitfire Griffin. Um, it sits at 5.7, which is the same BR as the Tempest and also the first Griffin Spit. So the way I would describe it as uh, the Tempest is better than it at energy fighting and the Griffin Spit is better at it uh, as the combination. Like the MB5 is not an energy fighter, it is not a turn fighter, it is this jack of all trades, master of none. But in the tech tree, you have a Spitfire Griffin, I believe it's the Mark 14, or it's basically the one which is the first of the four, uh, which ends in the uh, Mark 22 and Mark 24. And what you have with those vehicles is very good climbers, pretty good, tur pretty good uh, turners, but they're the first Spitfires that you encounter, which actually have good energy retention as well. Uh, or at least, you know, they keep their speed up. I mean, most of the Spitfires have decent energy retention, but after two or three turns, you're pretty much screwed in them if you're facing a good energy fighter. The Griffin Spitfires do not have this issue. So, uh, I think it is a worse version of what we have in the tree. Will it be fun to use? Yes, of course it will, um, being what it is. And I hope we get the other MB, the other Martin Baker plane, and I hope it's not a premium. Uh, it's kind of sad seeing this as a premium, but it is a prototype aircraft, so I suppose it makes sense. It's nice to see a contraprop uh, in-game as well. Would be nice to see a few more in the actual tree uh, itself. I think when it gets released, it will probably get lowered by 0.3 BR after a bit, uh, just because it is worse than its competition in the main tech tree. Uh, Japan is getting the key 108. I took that out, the 37 only has HE, so uh, it's not going to be good 
against uh, any of the ground targets that I thought maybe, maybe if they give it an AP shell, even though it's unhistorical, maybe it would be good against uh, some targets on the ground. Nope, it's sticking with that wonderful HE from the 37 you find on the Key 102. And let's just say it's not very good uh, when we come to the guns. It is still maneuverable for a twin-engine fighter. The Japanese have already, always had uh, the very maneuverable twin-engine fighters, and they're uh, very fun to fly. It's just when you have the opportunity to shoot, uh, the Key 108 and the Key 102 and uh, stuff like that are going to struggle at killing anything because they're going to pop and they're going to spark or they're not going to be able to penetrate which is a real issue. Kind of sad. So you're going to have to uh, really rely on those 20 millimeters, and you can do. Like, they're, they're, they're still pretty good, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, Italy gets a Spitfire Mark 5B Trop Premium. This is probably why the uh, Mark 5B Trop in the British line got a rework or a uh, model change. But they have slowly but uh, progressively being re uh, redoing the Spitfires. I remember the Mark 9 or the LF Mark 9 was uh, one of the last ones that they did, but they've been slowly but surely updating the models of them. And it is nice to see them. They look absolutely beautiful. Uh, but yeah, an Italian Spitfire. I suppose it's an interesting idea. Uh, if you want to grind out the tree, it's obviously a solid premium. But compared to the aircraft you already have in the Italian tree, I'm not sure you would want to take it over them. I think it would be, if it was like a Mark 9, I would definitely pick it up, or a Mark 2B, I would pick it up. But a Mark 5 Trop, like, it is heavy in the nose, meaning that you can't do what other Spitfires can do. Uh, the next one is the RE2000. So, uh, Tiger Frost and others have talked about it, like Nathan Clawfish, um, who is a resident on the... Uh, TEC Hub Discord, if you want to uh, go on to that and, you know, chat to people. Uh, there is a link in the description for it, by the way. Uh, but anyway, back to the RE2000. The way that they've described this is it's nice to see, not because it's going to be a great plane, but because it's a sign of things to come. And I completely agree with them. Uh, the plane that I really want to see in... Is it the RE2007? Let's just have a look, yeah. Um... There is a few planes that are, let's just say, either paper or concept or were built in uh, some way. So if we go here and then just get rid of... There we go. RE205. This is the one that I want. Uh, but there are a few Reggianis, such as this one, the Sagittario, uh, which I've talked about... Whoa, Maybe a year ago now, at least, when I did my uh, my Italian tech trees I'd like to see. There's 48 of these built, and this was supposed to be contemporary to a lot of the stuff uh, which was around at the time. It's got a big-ass engine on it. It obviously had its issues, um, but it would be nice to see in the game. And the reason why it's nice to see the RE2000 is because it means that planes like this uh, will come along uh, hopefully soon. One of the interesting things about the uh, Reggianis is that on the dev server, the 2000 had its own parts of the tree on the left side. So for me, that indicates a new line of planes, and hopefully it ends either in the 2005 or the 2007. The 2007, like from my personal point of view, I hate having these aircraft in game. I think it's a really bad idea, <laughs> but uh, since... Uh, I'm going by the rules of Gaijin and the rules of what we've had before. Hello, R2Y2. How you doing? Nice to see you as a blotch on my memory. Uh, this type of plane is allowed pretty much in the game. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, it would be interesting to see an RE 2007. But the main thing is the RE 2005. Uh, so, yeah. This is, you know, looking for things to come, basically. Uh, France, the Martin 167A3, uh, I talked about it in the dev server video as well. Uh, the issue I have with it is the same issue that I have with, just checking the recording here, there we go. Uh, the same, it's the same issue I have with a lot of planes that have been added um, over the years. I don't know why I take this over an NC223 or a 2223, 
um, in the French tree, the big heavy bomber with the 220s. If I'm playing in air realistic, and then if I'm playing in ground forces, yeah, I could probably take it. Uh, but it's still a big target. It only has 7-7s seven going forward. And the bomb load isn't that good. But I suppose if you are precise with it, uh, you should be okay with it. It's added at least uh, uh, 2.3, meaning that it will be competitive. Uh, it will probably be one of the first reviews that I do of the new patch, uh, just because I know a lot about uh, the Martin, just because it was also used by the British. What is interesting on it, though, is that it is the French variant, but it does have British guns on it. Or at least, I shouldn't say British guns, but the guns that the British use, the Brownings, as the 7.7s and not the 7.5s. I thought what they would do is they would put the 7.5s on it just to make it uh, distinguished compared to the British version. Because if you didn't know, there was a British version that was added to the, um, to the dev server files. But obviously it's not in the tree, so maybe that's going to be a premium down the road. Or maybe that's going to be added to the tree at some point. And the main difference between the... Uh, the French version and the first uh, 167 for the British was absolutely nothing. But then the second version, uh, they actually added a uh, better engines and stuff like that. So maybe we see two versions or maybe we see a premium version and a, and a standard version in the tech tree. The French also get a Yak-3 premium. Uh, I think this bolsters uh, any players who want to... Uh, play France and not have to deal with any of the terrible French fights. Well, not, they're not terrible. That's a bad description. The slightly worse French fighters compared to the rest. Like, for me personally, I enjoyed the VBs, but uh, I know a lot of people didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, how, that's how I'm seeing it. Like, it, it was definitely one of the worst stock grinds I've done in a very long time, uh, the VBs, but I still enjoyed them. The Act 3 is going to be a solid premium for you. Uh, to be able to get through that French tree if all you want to do is to play uh, the Jets or at least the later tier stuff. Maybe you can use the Russian to skip all the Americans which are in the French tree. Yeah, let's see it like that. Also, you have the MD-452 Mystere 2C pre-series. Uh, a few people asked me to have a look at this on the dev server. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, have a the proper look I wanted uh, to it. It doesn't seem as fast as I believe it should be, but then again, it is the pre-series of the Mister 2, uh, which, you know, could pretty much mean anything. Because the Mister 2 itself was an incredibly nippy aircraft, one of the first to actually breach Mach 1, uh, especially in the European theater. And it's kind of sad to see that the pre-series uh, has been kind of neutered, but then again... As I said, I haven't really read a lot about it in the real life uh, part, uh, you know, the historical part, so maybe it was like that. It does have 230s on it though, uh, the same cannons that you get on the Votor, uh, the second Votor, and the Hunter, but it is only two of them. They are very high velocity, they sound absolutely beautiful, and they will annihilate planes, so that will be fun. It is the first uh, proper jet fighter for the French, which actually has guns which represent a killing fighters. The Orujan, the Barujan, uh, all of those <laughs> aircraft have 20s which don't feel like they're designed for jets uh, combat. So to see an actual fighter or an attacker, since it's in the, uh, what I would call the attacker line, even though they're pretty much fighters anyway, um, it's nice to see it with guns which will be designed to kill jets instead of uh, props. So yeah, we'll have to see. There was a lot of stuff added to naval, so pretty much uh, two tech trees. We have the USA and Germany. My stance on naval right now is I've been playing the uh, beta test, the CBT stuff, and I've been enjoying it. Uh, I still stick to my critiques that I had before about it, and I don't think they'll ever change. Uh, but we'll have to see how these tech trees actually sort themselves out. I'm going to not comment on them yet because I haven't had the full um, actual play with them and I want I need to see what the tech trees are going to look like I need to see if these smaller boats are going to go up against the bigger ones because then there's going to be a few issues something that is interesting though is the albatross this uh, fast attack aircraft uh, if I can get it up 
there we go. Is it this one? I think it is. Oops. Just checking here. Uh, yeah, this is the one. So, it has these missiles on it. These are exosets. And they're French-made, they're anti-ship missiles, and they're radar-guided. And if we look at the picture of this, uh, you can see that they're mounted here, in this area, and then you have guns on the front and back. There is actually a video. Um, I can't... I can't... Uh, it's on, like, a Russian YouTube channel. But it's basically looking... It shows, like, all of the... Uh, the ships themselves and what they look like and stuff, but this is pretty much you know what it looks like and You can see where the missiles are kept. You can see where the guns are. I believe the guns are Let's just make sure to check They are 76 millimeters uh, over, Well, yeah over here and over here probably but yeah, these are radar guided Anti-ship missiles and I'm wondering if they're going to have the same mechanics as the ATGMs or if they're going to be like fire and forget missiles, uh, we're going to have to see. That is that is something that we will be tested, I'm sure, in the near future. But that caught my eye, and that's pretty much all I want to talk about in shipping right now. So, uh, in location of mission updates, they've changed Poland, so they've added a new village to the northeast uh, with respawn zones in RB and SB battle modes. The Stone Ridge added on the shore of the lake, which covers the respawn zone. Uh, we played on it, uh, me and Mofo went on it to test uh, some of the armor values of the new vehicles uh, that we'll be fighting. Uh, just to get a general idea of how like the armor on stuff like the Abrams and the Challenger works. Uh, I didn't see this village uh, in the northeast. If it's talking about the collection of houses which has always been there and they've just added a few more, then okay. But that won't give you any cover. Um, they've pushed the respawns back into areas which are flat ground. Uh, the issue with this is that they've put trees around them. So that means, well, actually, it, it depends how you look at it. So, uh, if you if you are snowballing the game and you are pushing forward, or if you decide to flank around the whole map, you can sit in these forests and just wait for people to spawn in and then kill them over and over again. Uh, which is what I'm sure a lot of Leopard drivers will do, and a lot of KPZ and MBT drivers will do, and also the Leopard 2K. But will that influence the battle that much? I mean, maybe not, because you can't kill everyone else and you're putting your team at a disadvantage. But if your team wins, then you're just going to stomp the game, because you can wait in those forests around the spawns for people to move. Um, but I suppose that's better than just being able to shoot across the whole of the map, which is what's happening right now on Poland. The Stone Ridge definitely does help the respawn zone in the south, uh, but still, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, especially if you're designing it for higher tiers, because higher tier uh, vehicles are just too fast to even care about stuff like that. Uh, it just basically just makes that one ridge in the northwest completely void, and to be honest, it was pretty much void anyway. You would maybe get like one guy there who would be looking on the south hill, and uh, he would try and kill as much as he can, he would die, and then they would dominate, people would dominate the South Hill, and then from there they would be able to look at both spawns. So, yeah, uh, it's nice to see that that's been changed. They've uh, changed some of Eastern Europe, they've also added two larger territories in the form of the European province, and also the neighbourhood of Volokolamsk, uh, on the locations of Eastern Europe and Volokolamsk. Uh, the urban and rural parts of the location Maginot Line has had a significant detail added, and then new test flights uh, have been added for places. So Maginot Line, uh, the urban environment they're talking about is basically the village um, around the place. And it does look really nice um, on the dev server. And that may be down to the new graphical upgrade of the Dagor 5. Or it may be up to the fact that uh, the colours aren't just as, uh, what would be the word, as flashy, I think is the way to put it. Uh, but the European province and neighborhood Volokolamsk, I think it was right to uh, show you these. Uh, so these are the two new ones. These are going to be available at uh, the higher tiers. And basically what they've done is they've taken what the maps used to be and put them back to where they were. Uh, when the map analysis I made for Volokolamsk came out, um, that was a very long time ago. If you want to go and have a look at that, uh, you'll probably have to search the channel. Um, here, I'll just I'll have a look myself. Just see if I can uh, find it. 